Hi everyone, thanks for coming. So we're gonna start off with the denture design process and we're gonna do kind of a single arch, going through all the tools and functions for designing dentures. And then we'll dive into abutment split files. So learn the strategies to successfully design an abutment and a crown at the same time so they seat the first time, saving you some time and workflow um, in your laboratory and what settings and indications will help you succeed with the split files. So I went ahead and opened up a denture workflow here. And the first thing we start is the model analysis. It's asking us for the occlusal plane first. So we're going to click on the right side posterior, the midline, and then the left side. It inserts the occlusal plane and sagittal planes to which you can adjust as needed for the case you're working on. And then if we come down to the characteristic points, this is where you're identifying those characteristic points. Three Shape gives you kind of this box here where you're working top down, so it's telling you what it wants you to mark first. So we go retromolar pad one, then the buccal side of that, the lingual side, the central ridge point, and then we'll go to the patient's left side. It's bolding the selections as soon as you select them. So now we'll go to K9.1 and then K9.2. And then we go next, and this is called the lower jaw boundary. This is basically where you're drawing the base outline. So we come over to the left, you have to activate your spline here by clicking on the box and you get this fancy little pencil. And then you're just clicking around the arch to apply. We're gonna come all the way around, connecting the first dot and the last dot. And then we'll be able to go through the changes in, in the event you need to modify. You can see here that it changes to pink, giving you kind of an appropriate color scheme. You can drag the dots. You can also right click and choose a fast edit. When you choose the fast edit, it's giving you the option to kind of just click and drag. And then to turn that off again, you can right click, deselect it, and then it gives you the dots. Of course, when you do the fast edit, you have a lot more dots. So that's how you apply your outline. And then we'll go ahead and move forward. In three shape, the default for digital dentures is to not block out. So as a default, as you see over here on the bottom left, it's clicked on none. So that's the default. You can choose to do a global block out angle and adjust that with the setting here. So it will block out on its own or you can manually block out which you know, normally as technicians we're used to, you can adjust your insertion path two ways. One of them is to rotate with your right mouse and set the insertion path based on the way you're looking at it. So if I change my insertion, I can come over to the left, click set from view and it will adjust it. You can also use your arrows over here on the left and give it a specific degree to move in. So if I'm clicking one, click to the right, it's moving five degrees in that direction. Okay, so a couple different ways to change your insertion path. And then if we come down to wax trimming, this is where you have the option to block out. You're also able to do any relief zones. Three Shape gives you a couple different ways to add relief zones. Either one, you can block out a specific parameter, or a specific setting. Another option is a relief zone with a spline, and I'll show you that as we continue on. But wherever you want to block out or add a relief, if we're using our positive wax knife setting, down here it says 0.4. That's actually a setting that says I only want to add 0.4 millimeters of block out. So you can get very specific on how much relief you're adding. And then as you add, 
you can see the pink here and I'll kind of darken it, but it's stopping at four tenths. Okay, so you can put whatever you setting you want in here. If I were to come up to, let's say, 0.8, then my block out would be much thicker. Okay, so you can put that anywhere. And the pink is definitely indicating where you've, where you've added that. Or you can choose not to do any block out at all. And then we'll keep going. And down here at the bottom, this is the options for your library. So if I drop down the provider, you can have several different libraries in here. There's a lot of free libraries that are available inside the control panel to download for free. There's also different ones you can purchase like from Vita, Colzer, Ivoclar, but then you would work directly with them if you're using their libraries. So we're going through the motion of the, the most free form design where you have full control and full output, right? Where wh whether you're milling or printing your denture base and your teeth and full design capabilities because when you're using carded teeth, you have limitations because your specifications are coming based on those carded teeth. So over on the left, let's say we'll choose a vertex. And as we get through the library here, and drop these down, you can see we have several different libraries that are available. And the numbers here are giving you the span of that section, how big the tooth is, like the depth of it, and the height. So based on the mouth you're working on, you can choose different parameters. Different libraries offer different, different options. If I were to come down to the nobilium, they also have an extensive library. And depending on the library that you choose, there's also tapering, square, ovoid. So lots of different options with the libraries. Just depends on what you want to choose. You also have the option to only show full arch libraries and the option to use single posterior for both sides of the arch or individual. And the individual is important when you're getting into single tooth or bridged teeth depending on your library choices. So we'll go back to the vertex here and we'll just kind of put something in there. Click the apply and then you want to evaluate the library to see what you may like initially. So as I rotate around, you can see it's inserted the planes and of course your visuals over here on the right are giving you the ability to turn those on or off. And then as we zoom in, this green spline that's happening around each tooth, that is the visual indication of where your gingiva is going to go up to. Okay, and if you're ready to, if this is a library you want to choose, you can tuck this away so it's out of your way visually. You can also see the lines happening. That's based on your model analysis. So it's kind of putting the Pons triangle in there for you. So now as we go through here, over on the left in our design tools, the most effective way to get through kind of a denture design is to work left to right because this left one is kind of a global movement. Then we're going to move into sectional movement, individual movement, and then morphing. So in the global, you can see it's moving the entire arch. And then as we zoom in, if you notice that horizontal line, it's showing you where that movement and rotation is pivoting from. You can also grab it and move it. Okay, your blue is kind of a static. And then if we look here on this green one, it's kind of bringing it forward just from that anterior perspective. Okay, and as you rotate, you can do different things as a as a single arch. Okay, but that only works so far, right? You're in a global movement, now you need to start getting into individual movements. And when you get into individual movements, if I take this off of there and we go to an occlusal perspective, I'm going to click the next box here which is called arch setup. And as you hover over here, it's kind of giving you some indications of what you can do 
as far as moving the teeth. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it. We have the option to click teeth and move them and also to change things symmetrically. So if you're going to a symmetrical approach, you can check the box. And then what's happening here is as you grab certain teeth, they're moving in unison. Now I, I was moving the second molar there and I included the second molars in the case setup so that I could specifically show you how to remove those teeth in the event you want to take them out. If we were to, I'll show you that when we get there, you can only remove them when we're in our individual step. So the second molar here does this pivot based on that first premolar. If I come up to my second premolar, kind of does the same thing, but then if I go to my first premolar, I'm doing a complete static movement, right? So the symmetrical works very well, but sometimes, you know, different sides of the mouth, opposite sides, you can uncheck that and still perform sectional movements. So when you start with a global, you move some sections, arc transformation, get those into position, and some of the visuals you can start to incorporate over on the right here, you can bring in your bite or wax rim. Of course, you're opposing. You have your planes. This one here, this is called your occlusal map. And what this is doing is bringing in a color scale of how it's interfering or intersecting with the opposing. So you can see here as we zoom in, some of this yellow, light yellow, it's not really coming into heavy contact. Where we're getting into the blue and the green outline, that is showing us heavy intersection. So if I come in here and kind of do a rotation and zoom in, you can see how that's heavily interfering into the opposing. So we can use that color scale to help position the teeth without having your kind of scan visually in your way. So we take that off, depending on where we are, or you can start with, you know, making sure they're in the right place and then moving them individually which brings us to this option here in the individual setup. What that's doing, if you notice, I have quite a few dots happening. So let's go over them. This first one is gonna kinda of do a static movement of your tooth, the blue one. The red one is always rotation. The green one is increasing occlusally. And you can see that we have them on all sides, mesial, distal, and even on the gingival side. Okay, and depending on the way you're looking at this is going to give you the options for your tools. If we come from an occlusal view, you can see that I have this joystick. That's actually giving us full rotation. If I right click, on my second molar here, you have options. Okay, and we're gonna go over these. This one I wanted to show you is you can remove this second molar, or you can remove all second molars. Okay, you'll have that option whenever you're dealing with a single arch or a double arch. So we'll go remove all second molars, and you can see that it has removed them. And then you're also able to remove the second premolar. Okay, so it limits you to the second premolar and second molar. One thing to remember here is if those teeth are not in your order form, like if your second molar is not in your order form, you cannot just add it in the design. So if you're unsure if you need it or not, the best option is to choose it in your order form and then remove it in the design. You also have some options here for bringing to mesial contact and bring to distal contact, and I'll show you that. I wanna go back to this arc transformation, I think, is what's going to show it to us. And you can see here, clicked on the wrong button. Now I have some more dots. They're kind of disappearing on me, though. This will give you, from a sagittal perspective, 
an inclination change of the anterior. Okay, so we'll grab all six of those anterior, and then you can see that vertical line, that's the pivot that it's giving you that, that change with. Okay, and it's also giving you a degree change in that measurement. It doesn't do, you know, if you're wanting to do different tilts with the posterior, three shape doesn't have that option currently, so you would have to do that kind of individually. You can't do it as a group. So we'll come back to the individual. And however you set up your dentures, if you're starting from the anterior or the posterior, you're starting in one position and then if I move this and I right click on the tooth and say bring to distal contact, it will actually move that tooth. So I'm going to move this a little bit more just for demonstration purposes. And as we zoom in and I click on this tooth, bring to distal, it will actually move that tooth for you. Okay, so you're not having to do a lot of resizing if it's not necessary. And constantly rotating, making sure things are in the right position. Another thing when you're designing dentures, this green spline is a very strong visual cue for setting yourself up for success because three shape does not want your teeth to be intersecting in such a way where your interproximals are disappearing on that green spline, okay? It wants it to go in there. When we get into the connectors and your what's called the coupling mechanism, that definitely will have a strong effect of being able to move forward in three shapes. So let's say we can right click, bring to mesial contact and move that over. But you can see how high this interproximal spline kind of goes. Now your teeth can still touch, you just want to make sure you're not doing any heavy, heavy kind of intersecting there. And I'll show you a great tool as well that will actually be very helpful for identifying because when we get into the kind of hustle and bustle you have this option over here on the right it's this bullseye so I'm going to turn that on and you can see here down at the bottom we have some green check marks and some blue information dots the information dots are showing us how we're colliding so the A stands for anatomy the M stands for mesial and the D stands for distal. So that's telling you how you're intersecting. So this tooth, this first molar here is colliding occlusally. The second premolar is colliding on the mesial and then in conjunction, this first premolar is colliding on the distal. So if I right click, Bring to me a zone. It didn't do much. So if I move this a little bit, I think the biggest thing with these information dots, and you can see as I did a right click and then moved to distal contact, I now have green check marks here. I think the green check marks are good, but it's really important when you're talking about your interproximals. Anatomy, not so much. As we go forward and go through excursives, you can rely on the virtual articulation to help remove some of that data. But in my experience with designing and the success of creating your seating surfaces for the digital dentures, it's the mesial and distal that you should pay more attention to. So if we have all A's, not a big deal, right? We can come in here with our morphing tool on the left and we can do some individual adjustments. So you can grab the dots, you can also just grab the area and click and drag and adjust them however you need to. Okay, if we are you also have the option to bring in contact with antagonist doesn't mean it's going to put it in the right place. It's really finding the first point of contact. So you're still responsible to make sure that your 
developing your occlusal scheme correctly and accurately. Maybe okay, you can see we have this gap, and gaps are okay. When we get into the connectors, it's actually going to connect everything, and that's also based on the way your case is set up. Different laboratories do different things, and it could be based on your manufacturing process. If you are doing one section with your anatomy, which would be your bridge, your teeth, that takes more space if you're milling something, right? Full roundhouse takes more space. Oftentimes I've seen laboratories section it out into either two sections or even two posteriors and a single anterior section. You can also do four sections where you have the posterior section and then you're breaking your anteriors into two sections, right? That helps nest a few more uh, bridges in your puck. It's entirely up to you, but 3Shape is giving you that option where you would perform that in your order form setup, okay? You're telling the system how you are um, outputting it. A lot of the digital denture output comes directly from your order form, okay? So if you're not getting the correct output, 99% of the time it's from your order form. So we'll continue to bring these in. We'll get into the gingiva, creating our base. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the A's. It looks pretty good as far as the, the check marks. I'm not gonna get super final, you know, with kind of putting it in correct position. It's, it's a good basic placement and we'll do this one as well. And you can resize them, change them. I mean, like I mentioned before, if it is carded teeth, your options here for your individual transformation are basically just moving the tooth, right? If you think about a pre-carded teeth, you're not, you're not able to change that in your design. Okay, and I'm gonna leave this section kind of heavy so we can evaluate the adaption when we get into the virtual articulator to show you that that will perform that function for you. Okay, we'll keep going to the mandibular base here. Based on our outline, it still gives you the opportunity to adjust your outline here if you need to. Okay, clicking on the dots and also the full menu when you right click on there. Okay, just like we did when we initially drew the outline. And then over here on the top left in this window that comes up, this is your draw base outline. Of course, it's already there. You can delete it and reapply it if you need to. There's also an option for a window if for whatever re reason you need to put in a window. One thing with the, it's actually specifically for removables and this happens also in your RPD workflow. If you notice at the bottom right of the tool here, it's a circle. That's telling you what kind of spline it needs. So when it's a circle, it wants you to connect the first dot and the last dot to complete that function. Here is the secondary option for your relief zone. So when you activate a relief zone, pretty much drawing it in there, drawing a circle, and then you have a relief zone setting. Okay, so if you're choosing to use relief zones versus blocking out your model, that's giving you an option. Or you don't maybe wanna go all the way back to the block out feature, you can definitely do that here. And all you're doing, once your pencil is activated, you can come in here, let's say we'll take these teeth, and you're drawing a circle. And you can see how the spline color is different. It's pink, giving you a visual cue that it's a different than your actual outline. You can do the same function here where we right click and delete the spline. And then over here as well on the left, you have base thickness. Let's say we'll change that to 2.5. And then here with these three boxes, 3Shape calls it the Gingivator 3.0. You have three options to kind of start with or kind of a quick click. We have a delicate option, a natural, 
and an intense. So with the natural here, you can see it's kind of blue. You also have some sliders here to help customize those specific areas. And 3Shape has done a really good job giving you the visual so you're not just kind of aiming in the dark. You know that this slider is going to affect the gingival margin, the grooves, and then the edge shape profile. This menu is specific for version 2021. So if you like this feature, you definitely have to be updated to the 21. Okay, and all you have to do is slide it. Gives you a great visual to kind of show you where you need to be. Drill compensation down here, this is if you are milling something. So if you're printing, drill compensation can be deactivated. You don't need it, right? Specifically for the burr if you're milling it. So if you're printing, just uncheck it. And then of course, if you are milling, your drill radius is definitely related to the burr that's being used. Okay, so we'll put our teeth in there. We've chosen the natural. Now we're going to come up here to preview. Kind of wait for it to calculate. And here's the natural setting. Now we will have the option to manually sculpt on here. We're not limited. Okay, so you might find kind of a ground place, a basic place, and then you can modify as needed with the wax knife tools. If we go to intense, let's just preview that. Kind of show you the differences between a couple of them. The intense can be pretty intense, but sometimes with 3Shape, the, the heavier the setting, when you go in there to sculpt, then you kind of are fine tuning it to a, to a very desirable place. And you can see kind of what this does. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. And now we're on the connector phase. And the connector phase is for the purpose of connecting the teeth together. And you can see here we have a facial scale, a lingual scale, and a center scale, and percentages behind them. So in the visual, it's actually showing you what that is going to change. And you can only come down a certain percentage, because of course your teeth need to be connected together let's say 70%. I'm going to take our base and our scan off of there so we can see what's happening. So now you can see they're all connected. Then from here, once your units are connected, you can activate your virtual articulator. Okay, I came down to Sculpt and Addy to me to make sure that our connector phase was complete. You have the option to sculpt the anatomy here as well. Now that everything is grouped together, you can see in your sculpt toolkit, you have morphing, your wax knife setting, attachments, plane cuts, those are all available. So you can click, but it's now kind of one piece. But you can come in here and adjust in the embrasure area if you want. And then over on the right hand side, I'm going to click my articulator visual. And it's going to bring that in.
Over on the left, this box is your virtual articulation. You can change your incisal pin. You know, normally if you're getting changing your bite, you're doing it prior to putting your teeth in there and designing. So you still have the option to change your bite configuration before you've gotten here, but the purpose here is to actually go through excursives and make an adaptation based on your design. You can see here with the open incisal pin, changing your Bennett's, anything you're changing here, of course, you'd want to lock before you do anything else. So we're going to stay on the top menu and click on the box on the right. This is your excursive movements. You have some options in here, whether you're guiding by the incisal plate, you're guiding by your design, making the choice that's appropriate for the case you're working on. Then visually, I'm just going to kind of take this off and we're going to play our excursives. Now from here, you can see it didn't really make any contact here and it's prob probably limited here. You can change some of your movements. When it's guide by design, it was really kind of guiding it back here on that area. So if we uncheck that, we're gonna go through it again and you can see you get a much different result, right? But we are typically going to do the guide by design and then I'll run that again and I'll show you how to adapt On the left, under the adaptation, you have a setting here. The setting is what you're telling the system how, how much to cut. If we want it at zero, if we want it at 0.1, and then what you're gonna do is click Adapt Design, and it's going to take care of that area. It can either manually do it for you or automatically based on that button, or you can manually adjust it, okay, with your, with your Sculpt Toolkit but you cannot adapt it until after your connectors are complete, right? So if you're going through your excursives when you're doing your library and whatnot, then you're kind of choosing to manually adjust those areas. And then all you need to do to get rid of that is come out of here. And then we're on the Sculpt Anatomy. You can see we have Sculpt Anatomy and Sculpt Denture Base. It separates the two and you're able to kind of come in here and do what you need to. Then if we come to Sculpt Denture Base and you wanted to make some adjustments, then you are coming in and sculpting wherever with your wax knife. You can see this gingiva is kind of coming through here, but that's not going to be there um, once you generate the coupling mechanism. In the menu here, Three Shapes offered two additional options or tools in Three Shape 2021. This one here kind of looks like a ball of yarn, but this is your stippled wax. If stippled wax is something that you're interested in, for the dentures, you can see when we drop down the pattern, you have some options. If we go to Pattern Fine, and then this is where you're indicating where you want that. You can do a check mark and highlight all of it, or you can do the selection and only do a specific selection or a specific area. Okay, I've kind of seen it a little bit different ways from people. You highlight the area and then you would click the plus sign and it will activate that stippled wax. Okay, it's a little aggressive, I think, in the denture module, but you can also come in here and do some sculpting on that as well. Kind of get some texture in there and so on. So if you're not on 2021, you won't have the stippled wax feature. And then they've also included an ID tag. So you can come in here Type in whatever you'd like. 
Of course, the text depth, you want a positive or a negative, and text height. So if we go plus, you can kind of put this wherever you need to. And then this will actually rotate. Uh, I've never had that question. Let's try it. I don't know if it'll let you. It might with this allow sculpting. Let's try it. Yes. Yeah. Which is a great place for it, right? Yeah. Let's try it. You might have to activate this setting or you may not. So let's test it. You don't need to. So the allow sculpting is really when you are using kind of your wax knife, right? So now I can't add a remove, but if I check the box, great question. Okay, so ID tags, add a remove, you have options for blocking wax and doing different things. So this does, well, a certain measurement, just like we saw before. I don't think this tool is really effective in the denture module because it doesn't really stop anything. It's more for blocking out, which if you've gotten this far, gives you an, an additional option. Okay, so stippled wax and ID tag. And then let's go forward to the coupling mechanism. The coupling mechanism, it's what's creating the pockets for the seating surfaces of the teeth and the base. And when we're in here, you also are given this purple apron. And I'm gonna preview so that we can really see the purple apron. The teeth right now are going pretty far in, but we have some settings over here, coupling depth and coupling angle. So the depth is how deep the pocket is. And one millimeter would definitely suffice. Two millimeters is kind of the standard. If you have enough space and want a deeper pocket, then you can also change that setting. Okay, so the purple apron, that's what's going to be sitting inside of the base. And then you also have this joystick here where you can change the insertion direction of the coupling mechanism, right? So if you have different sections, different thickness areas, you can adjust this and you can see as I move it, that apron is also sort of moving. So it's the insertion path of the tooth section into the denture base. And then over on the left, you can see you have the arrows for insertion as well. The coupling angle is specifically, as we zoom in, the coupling angle, see how it's kind of dipping in? It wants to create a positive pocket to where it's not creating, where you're having to hand grind to seat them together. The rounding radius and fillet radius are also in addition to that. So if we were to decrease these, let's say we cut them in half and we preview that, you'll be able to see how sharp you can see the angle is still there but it's much sharper in this area and as technicians the last thing you want to do is kind of grind in there to seat it if your settings are appropriate it's kind of doing the work for you right in manufacturing as well We'll preview that again. So the settings that 3Shape gives you as a default work, work very well. But you can always change those to your liking. Okay, nice and rounded. We're two millimeters in. You know, if you're intaglio surface, if you have low clearance, that's kind of what's determining if you need to lessen that setting, but we have plenty of space on here to allow for that two millimeter coupling. 
Okay, we can't actually visually see the pockets at this point. And you can see I definitely can sculpt my denture base a little bit better if I need to. So let's keep going. We'll come down to the pre-manufacturing. And in the pre-manufacturing, you also have some information on the left, minimum thickness under teeth. And then you have a drill compensation for here as well. Because if you're printing, you definitely want to engage that. Or if you're milling, rather you want to engage up, but if you're printing, then you wouldn't. And you have a glue space here as well. So in the assembly is where we're going to see our pockets generate. So we'll preview and take a look at that. It takes a little bit to calculate. My computer's on a little bit of a slow, a little bit slow today. Does anyone have any questions so far on the denture aspect? Uh huh. You don't have to. Um, I think that really comes with your manufacturing process. Um, you can do one bridge. For the full roundhouse, you can section it into two sections, left side, right side. You can also do your posterior and anterior sections. You can also do posterior and two anterior sections, right? So it's not, you're not limited, but the way you do that is in your order form, okay? Because you're bridging in your order form, but no, you're not limited to that. You can also go singles. Right? If you're doing carded teeth and whatnot, then singles, you're kind of going that route, right? Because your teeth don't come bridged together. But you can also do that with a, the manufacturing process that you choose. Hopefully this will start to catch up. There it goes. And here is our pockets. Okay, so checking for any holes, any really thin areas that you may want to adjust. And then as we move forward, uh, the positioning guide, this is something that is specific that needs to be enabled, enabled on your dongle. Oops. So if you don't have this, could be the version or what's enabled on your dongle. Okay, so if you want it, definitely reach out to your reseller to get that taken care of. And then if we preview that, you also have some settings in here, the height, the depth, the liner space, and we'll preview and take a look. And we'll generate the cam and verify that output. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, your, your output is definitely dependent on your order form. and you have a positioning guide. So if that's something that you want, you don't have to use it, right? This is actually one of the first times I've seen it automatically come in, um, which is interesting. This is 21, but I think you have the ability in 2020 as well. I don't think it's a new feature in 21. It just has to be enabled on your dongle, right? So it's not automatically there.
Yes, and actually your, in, your single arch is gonna take more time from you as the designer because the double arch, your occlusal scheme is already programmed into the library. So as long as you're not changing that individual placement of your teeth, your occlusal scheme is where it needs to be, right? You can move and kind of position, you know, you can do some things, but it is coming in as the library is designed, which makes it really nice. As long as you get them in position, you can go with your gingiva and it's actually less time in my opinion. Yeah, great question. So we're at the end. Let's go ahead and close this and we'll generate our cam. In a three shape with the dentures, it's automatically giving you a monoblock, your try-in. So you don't need to select that in your order form, it's automatically giving it to you. So you can see here, you have your positioning. My monoblock didn't generate, I, have, I would have to go back and adjust something there. If it doesn't generate like this, then something needs to be adjusted. So I would go back in because this should be my monoblock. Okay, it has to do something in the calculation. I don't know if it was when it took a long time in there, but you should get that monoblock as well. Okay, and you can see here you have your anatomy and then your base. Okay, and it would do the same thing with your double arch. If you're doing a double arch, it typically calculates your, your maxillary arch before your mandibular, right? So you would go through the connectors and all of that on one arch, on the upper arch, before you get to the lower arch. It does them kind of individually. A new feature in 2021 down here at the bottom is it does give you the visual display of what library was used. Previous versions, you actually had to go all the way back into your design workflow to remember or to find out what library was used. Okay, so that's a new feature in the 2021. Okay. Okay, so next we're gonna cover abutment split files. So it's with the purpose of designing an abutment and a crown at the same time and having them successfully seat together. Granted, a lot of times or sometimes you might have to manually push down the abutment margin depending on the case you're working on in those kind of instances, a split file really is not an option because you're manually adjusting and then scanning again. So I have a case set up. We have an abutment and a crown over it. I also, um, Argon has done a good job as far as coming up with settings and parameters. So if we open this up, we're gonna go through some of these settings because 90% of the success of your split file comes from your abutment design. Okay, and 10% from your crown design and the settings behind that. We have a document here kind of outlining those settings and suggestions for creating a successful design. And we had some of those printed out for this show. So if this interests you and you like those settings and want it, there is a document on the table right before you exit out of this lecture room. And you can take that with you and have it on hand. Okay, it's great, it's very helpful. We come into our abutment design. And of course, with any split file, it wants kind of your basic crown pre-designed first. So we're just kind of gonna put ourselves in a rough position. And then start with our abutment design. With abutment design, the robotic is actually probably my preferred because it's consistent through all the three shape workflows, but it also gives you the most control. So in the type, it's robotic. And then I typically come down to a reset 
do a full reset so you're kind of starting with a blank canvas. That way you're kind of not fixing what three shape was presented to you, but you're starting kind of from the ground up. So then from here, what I typically do is get your four main dots in their respective position of buccal, lingual, mesial, and distal. If they're in their respective positions, the behavior of the design is going to be in your favor. And then from here, you position them accordingly. And with abutment design, really starting with your emergence and your marginal levels first, and then the top portion comes secondary. If you work from the top down, you're just kind of creating more work for yourself. Changing your view, adjusting your position if you need to. So once I have those four in position, then I'm coming with my sub dot controls. You can see it's getting a little misshaped and that's okay. You also have the option here to use this, the little shapes. I don't know what they technically call it in three shape, but if you activate that box, what happens, and I'm actually gonna click here real quick so I can go from an occlusion so you can see what that does. If we're here, as we rotate through the menu, you can see it's giving a different shape. And whatever is chosen here that's anything but a full circle, you're already adding automatically um, anti-rotational characteristics to your abutment. A little bit of squaring, but not too square. And now we'll start to get into some of the settings for a successful split file. One of those settings is up here, it's called your draft angle. We recommend to start at a minimum of five. And what that does is adjust the draft angle of the abutment. So a minimum of five. Then we come down to your shoulder radius. I'm gonna take off our scan here so we can really see it. Of 0.9 because you can see how that gives a nice transition into that shoulder. And that's where 90% of the fit issues are with split files. Okay, so if you bring this up, a minimum of 9.9 .9 millimeters, you can see as this becomes sharper, that's where your issue starts to come into play with your crown not seating. Okay, so a minimum of 0.9, and a top fillet radius, a minimum of 0.5 because it, it softens kind of the marginal ridge up here. Also, your shoulder width, if we hover over this, you can see my shoulder width is 0.8. So that's a good setting. You want a, a minimum of 0.5. Try not to go less than 0.5 because you, you end up with really shallow a really shallow shoulder, which then ends up with trouble seating. Okay, so give yourself adequate shoulder width, a minimum of 0.5. I think we recommend anywhere between a half a millimeter and 0.8. Right, so if we're at 0.6, nice margin. Um, also, if you want universal on all sides, which I'm a fan of, instead of doing one side and then the other side and then the other side, if you click the shift button, it will do all of them. Very helpful, you're getting nice universal shoulder all the way around. Okay, so those are your main players for your abutment settings. Okay, so you have your draft angle, shoulder radius, top fillet radius, and the document here has all that listed for you as well. Okay, 15 degrees on your shoulder angle. Um, it also talks about a retention groove. If you plan to do a retention groove, you would really wanna soften it up. One, for manufacturing of the abutment, 
But when you're doing a split file, when you're going into those sharp corners, it's going to give you a hard time, right? And if you have anti-rotational characteristics into your abutment design, a retention groove is sometimes not necessary, okay? So you want to think about that when you're designing split files. The other thing you want to think about is, is, is it zirconia? And are you dropping the, the margin lower? And where are you... Where's the sprueing surface, right? If you're having to sprue up here into the body of your abutment, think about what happens when you're grinding that off in a split file design, right? If you're above your, above your margin, you want to think about that stuff. When you're doing a titanium, most of them are, are milled from blanks, right? So there's no sprueing around the abutment. If you have to drop your margin too low or you can't drop it low enough because of manufacturing requirements, perhaps that's not a good candidate for a split file. If there's any adjustment that needs to happen after manufacturing, you adjust it and have to rescan, right? So there's definitely a criteria for the case that falls under split file design. You can also add different characteristics, you know, if you wanted to raise, you're, uh, create some buccal cusp, lingual cusp, drop the center fossa. You just don't want to get too extreme that it doesn't actually mill out that way. If you're too sharp and your manufacturing tool can't get in there to mill out that sharpness, that also creates a seating issue when it comes time for your crown and your abutment. Okay, now as we go forward, those are your main players for the abutment design, so that's 90% of the success. Then you have your margin line is already set. And now we get into die interface. So this is for your crown. If I preview this, and we actually preview the thickness here, anything in red is basically saying it might have a hard time reaching in there, heavy drill radius, so in our settings, when we get into the crown settings, you know, one, it talks about you don't really want any wavy margins. That's definitely working against you. But then you have your cement gap, your extra cement gap, and your distance to margin line. Those are the three main players naturally in the, the fit of your crowns. And these are specific settings for the split file. So you can see here, it breaks it up into posterior and anterior. And then it also breaks down your extra cement gap and your distance to margin. So we come back to our design. Extra cement gap was 0 0.02 or 1. I think it was 0 0.01. Let's check. Yeah, 0 0.01. Your extra cement gap is 0 0.065, which is a good setting. And then your distance to margin. Now, if we preview that, you can see that it dropped the extra cement gap to allow a little bit more room in one of those critical areas. Because if your crown is not seating and it's raised about half a millimeter, most of the time it has to do specifically with this area right here. Okay, so those are the settings for your crown itself. And if we take this off, we can't take our abutment off yet, so let's keep going. We'll take a look at the inside. So if you have to do any seating, most of the time it comes into the shoulder area. But if your settings are appropriate for that split file, your crowns will tend to fall right on and still have a relatively good fit. And then that's it as far as settings. And then you would continue on, of course, finalizing your crown. You can see I'm not meeting minimum thickness because I didn't finalize my crown design. But that is the, the main players for a successful split, split file. Of course, still very case specific on the success of those and the case you're actually dealing with, right? The case itself presents uh, what options you have for split file, and if it is, if it, 
if it is even an option. Okay, but nice shoulder, not, no sharp marginal ridge, a nice taper to your abutment, a nice transition, very even margins coming in there. And we document all of that in this document, which is very helpful. Well, thanks for coming today. Like I said, that physical document is on the table. Grab one of those. If anyone ever has any training needs or whatever, um, Argon offers a whole slew of free webinars, recordings, and dedicated trainings if that's something you guys need. Okay, thanks for coming.